All searching should start with the library catalogue. Now at CSU we have a search uh, called Primo and Primo offers a federated searching experience. So this means that you can search the library catalogue as well as various databases that the library subscribes to and ebooks and audiobooks using the one search window which is incredibly convenient for getting a really great big picture of resources that you could draw upon for your research. So let's look for what comes up when I do a simple search for inquiry learning. Starting here with a very simple broad search and we can see from this search that we've got a huge amount of resources returned, over 1 million resources returned. Now this in the first instance would be because I have done a search for inquiry learning without quotation marks. Now this means that the search has conduct, been conducted looking for anything that includes the words inquiry, learning or the phrase inquiry learning. So you can see that we've got some things where the phrase has been identified but also somewhere the term inquiry and the term learning have been identified separately. So we've got inquiry and then learning separate, inquiry and then learning separate. So you can see how I'm not searching specifically for the phrase inquiry learning, I'm searching for those individual words and most usually they are used in conjunction with each other. Now we can change this from 1 million down and reduce this, narrow our search down by putting quotation marks around this, these two words and now this will search only for the exact phrase inquiry learning. So let's see, we're going to go from 1,157,000 results. Let's do a new search. We're now down to only 18,000 results because now, as you can see, the only resources that have been returned are the ones where the exact phrase inquiry learning have been identified. So in this situation, in this case, it's probably just as useful to do the broader search because as you remember, we got lots of inquiry-based learning, guided inquiry learning, we got lots of useful returns. However, if you're searching for something where a specific phrase is needed, putting it in quotation marks is an excellent first step to making your search more narrow and more directed focus. So we can see here that there are all sorts of resources available through this search. This is an article that comes from a journal database. This is a physical book. If I scroll down, you can see there are more digital articles. I can narrow this by using these refine my search tools along the side here. So because I'm working remotely and I can't physically go to the library and access this book easily, I might decide that I only want to search for resources that are available online. So at the moment we've got 18,456 results. If I search for those only available online, that number isn't reduced by very much, which goes to show that this library actually provides an awful lot of resources accessible to everybody remotely. If I cancel that again, uh, you can order physical books be sent to you through the post as a postgrad student, but you need to then take into account that postage time and also the fact that you're going to then have to wear the cost to return that. So being able to search only those items available online can sometimes be a useful shortcut. The other thing you can do is you can narrow your search for looking only for peer-reviewed journals. Now this can be a little bit tricky because not every article that comes up through this peer-reviewed search will actually be peer-reviewed. There's a, quite a few art, uh, magazines that combine peer review with other publications, other articles that haven't gone through a peer review process and this fine grained response is not 
the, the catalog's not capable of making that determination. So always double check when you use that peer reviewed that the article itself has been peer reviewed. The journal may indeed have some articles, but we don't know if those particular articles that have been returned are all definitely being, um, being peer reviewed. Now, something else that's incredibly useful is changing the dates. Where in a lot of topics, we're not interested in texts from, say, anything from 2015 or before, especially if you're looking at uh, topics that are technology or information technology, information literacy, things that change really quickly. So let's limit our search to things published after 2018 to only get the newest of our resources. So we'll refine that. And we can see here that now we are only getting newer resources. We're not getting all of those other previously published resources. Now, if I want to change my search, but I want to keep these filters in place, all I have to do is click Remember All Filters. And now these will be locked in. So if I change this, just for example, to project-based learning. You can see that the filters have been saved and have been applied to this new search. So that's really uh, useful to remember to click on Remember All Filters. If you don't want those filters to apply, you just click the X and they will disappear and the search will be conducted without those filters applying. So if you don't remember to lock those filters, they will disappear with each new search. Now, the other thing you might have noticed and something that's very important for you to look at when you're researching is the opportunity to do an advanced search. Now, an advanced search helps you to really dig down deep and look more specifically, especially when you're looking, when you're starting with a topic like inquiry learning, which is so broad. So here we can determine whether we want the title or the subject to include the term. So let's suggest that we only want items that have project-based learning in the title. And we can also search for articles that also have a particular author. And you can see here that it's using the word and as a Boolean logic connector there to include these two. Now, if I actually change this to inquiry learning, and I change the author to Call Thou, who I know is an author in this area and search. Oh, maybe I've spelled Call Thou wrong. It's quite often that you can uh, you can do that. Let's take these uh, apostrophes away. This is how a catalog search is different to a Google search, in that if you've made a very slight spelling mistake it will return no results because it's a database. It's not a search engine. A search engine like Google will say, were you actually meaning to look for, and it will give you suggestions for commonly made spelling mistakes. But in an, a catalog using a database, it won't do that. So let's just try again with inquiry learning. No, maybe we'll take this filter off. And here we go. We can see that obviously she hasn't published anything in the last few years, but we have got only items published by Carol Quiltow on inquiry learning. So having this advanced search really allows us to narrow our search down quite, quite specifically. And so that's a very useful uh, tip to know about when you're searching using the catalogue.